I literally can't believe we're having a sex talk sitting next to this like Mr. Potato Head Mona Lisa. Like what a world. If I had thought that I'd be in this scenario right now a year ago, actually, you know what I might be like, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> Lauren, welcome back to my channel. Oh my god, the Mona Lisa painting is done. So crazy. LOL, just kidding. It's the cutout. Hi, welcome back. If you missed part one of this video, I painted the background of the Mona Lisa thinking for some reason that I would be able to paint the whole thing in one video. I was rudely awakened. Awoken? Awaken. Awoke? Awaken really awakened. And now we are here. So I don't entirely know what the game plan is for this video. I think the most entertaining part is going to be me attempting to paint her face because painting faces is just like on a whole other level of paint expertise that I do not possess. So the final product very well may end up being a little bit of mixed media. And when I say mixed media, maybe uh, we do her face and then slap on a, like from here down at the foot. I don't know. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I need to fix my attitude first. We can do this. We can't do this. So on top of doing my best with uh, the rest of the painting, I asked you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me, at LordDIY. And I asked you if you had any questions that are like awkward girl related questions. I am 26. I realize that I look 16, but I have been alive for like a solid amount of time. I never had an older sister to like ask awkward questions. And I asked you guys to ask me like the awkward ones, like the awkward ones. like. What hole does the tampon go in? It's the V-hole, P.S., if you're wondering, not the B-hole. <laughs> but seriously, no question is too stupid, and I feel like it's just so comforting to know that every single female experiences so many of these problems in one way or another, and I wanna help normalize that. So I'm going to be answering some super awkward and personal questions pertaining to just like girl things in general and also like me things in general, like, when did you lose your virginity? Stuff like that. So buckle up. I have a jug of an iced coffee here. There's also some chocolate oat milk in here, hence the coloring of it is a little questionable, but I am going to try to caffeinate myself through this uh, painting. We'll see how it goes. Wish me luck. Um, <laughs> I did a thing. So uh, here's her head. Here's Mona's head. You know what? I just like, I don't got time. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I don't got time. Just knowing me and knowing how much of a perfectionist I am, I could spend four hours just on this. And I really, really, really wanna focus on the face because I've never painted a face before, ever. Please don't be mad at me. Please don't be mad at me. <laughs> but I, I really wanna focus on the face. That's the hardest part. And uh, it's gonna be the most entertaining. So like I said, mixed media. <laughs> Anyways, I wanna hop into the question as I start working on the chest. I'm gonna start on the chest and work my way up, I think is my plan. I definitely think this is like a nice guideline for a very beginner painter to like help with proportions too. So 100% have like a cheater's guide to like hopefully making a more realistic sized Head. Also, why does Mona not have any eyebrows? Did we ever like debunk that situation about why she has no eyebrows? It gives her a large forehead. I see why eyebrows are integral to like your face structure. Should we just like give her some like snatched brows? That'd be so fun. We're not going to, but I want to. I want to really bad. Again, I feel as if I need to clarify that I do have pants on, not exactly pants, but I have shorts on. But you know, we just, we doing the oversized Lord DIY thing, you know, kind of wearing pants, but like not really, but like kind of wearing pants. All right, first question, let's hop into it and let's get painting. Also, do I still have to do white? I think I probably still do have to do white, right? Okay, also just like an overview of kind of what we're gonna be talking about. I already mentioned a few of the topics, but I feel like periods was a massive reoccurring question that I got a ton of. So like we really covering the whole spectrum of like girl things today. Why do I forget what to do? I'm like, what, what do I do? Okay, so I'm gonna start with the white again. Oh my God, I'm scared. Painting over this stuff feels so wrong. Also, wow, this covers really well though. I didn't expect it to cover the original design so well. I guess it's dry, that makes sense. Anyways, the first question is, do you use birth control and what kind? And I just wanna preface almost all of these questions with saying like, there is no right or wrong time to start anything, to do anything, to do anything by a certain age, that is all a social construct and you do not have to stress about that or worry about that and let that define your life, period. 
period. <laughs> Anyways, I went on birth control when I was 16 and I started with the pill, which I feel like is really common um, because it's like the easiest one to kind of like start with, I guess. And I feel like it's also the one that a doctor first prescribes before you want to try something else. So I was on the pill for probably three years. And then I had a friend who went on to NuvaRing and had a really great experience with NuvaRing. And so I was on NuvaRing for like, I don't know, I feel like my math is now not gonna add up, but I was on the pill for a few years and then I switched over to NuvaRing for a long period of time, like probably four plus years. And then this is actually all documented on YouTube as well. I switched over to Nexplanon, which was that little matchstick implant that goes into your arm. I actually still have a scar on my arm from when they removed it. All birth controls are going to react differently depending on so many things like your genetic makeup just like it, it's so individual per person so what works for someone could completely not work for someone else so what ended up happening was Tiff had an amazing experience on Nexplanon and all of Asian Girl Squad decided to try it Mia is still on it I think now but for Remy and I it destroyed our skin. I don't know if you guys remember my whole skin process from about a year and a half ago, two years ago, when I had literal cystic acne out of nowhere. And it was fully because that was just like not a good fit for me for birth control. And they encourage you to stay on your birth control for like a year, eight months or so for it to really settle into your body to know the side effects. So I had cystic acne for an entire year and my doctor kept encouraging me to stay on it, to stay on it, to stay on it. And eventually I ended up back on new ring because that is my best option for my body. But there are definitely major pros and cons of being on birth control in general. Again, it's so, 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 so specific per person but it's definitely something to discuss with your doctor um, before diving into it so you know everything that you are getting into. Might I just say that this looks terrible. This looks really, 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 really scary as it is. It's like a ghost face, right? It's, it's like a mummy. Like I feel like if you were to put two black eyes here, it would just be a literal mummy. All right guys, the moment you've all been waiting for and Okay, let's let's paint some boobies. Oh god. Oh lord. Okay, so the next question is pads or tampons regarding obviously period stuff. Personally, I guess I'm kind of a combination of both. I prefer tampons with a panty liner in the shape of a thong, a thong panty liner. Is that what it's called? I don't know, it's like the mini one. I actually had a few people ask specifically like what my period is like. So if this video is TMI for you or you're just here for the painting process, A, I'm very sorry because I'm not a great painter and it might be disappointing, and B, maybe just watch the video on mute. <laughs> But I thought this could just be like a fun hangout for us to like chat girl things while I'm also painting. It's like multitasking, like some major, major multitasking. Anyways, I got a lot of questions about what my period is personally like. So here we go. We're just diving right into the TMI stuff. This whole video is really just TMI, but like in a good way. So personally, my period is really, really light. When you're on Nexplanon specifically, you kind of lose your period, which is really weird and feels honestly unnatural at first because you're like am I just always pregnant or like what's happening like I don't know so like at first it's a little bit scary and feels a little unnatural but it's just like one of the side effects that honestly I was striving for when I was on next one on and Tiff had said such good things about it and like loved not having a period for three years and I was like yo sign me the hell up for that on next one on I had no period which was amazing and then switching back to NuvaRing I have a super light period that's also like really really predictable so when i take my nuva ring out and if you want to know more about nuva ring just like google it and it's 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 so simple and like so quick and easy basically i took my nuva ring out three days later i get my period my period is four days long and then after that you put your new nuva ring in and that's it like that's literally it it's so simple and so easy and so schedulable so personally tampons are great for me i never have the issue of really like leaking or bleeding through anything i never have issues of like staining pants or bottoms etc i had a lot of questions about like period horror stories and i'm really really lucky and i've always had a really light period and have never really had any kind of horror story with that kind of stuff and also like i feel like that's something to not be embarrassed about i know there are so many guys that are so immature in you know their younger ages and are probably such 
talked about it, but like if roughly 50% of the world is female, it happens to like 50% of the world. I don't know if it's helpful to think about it like that, but like that's just kind of like how I think about it. I again am really lucky, never really have to stress about that, but it is something that's so, so common and something that you shouldn't be ashamed about and like every girl got your back. Like I feel like if any girl ever was like, yo, can you check me? Can you check me real quick? Am I good? Every girl's like, yeah, I got you. I got you. Like that's just like universal girl code and I live for that. I also got questions about like what I started with when I first got my period and when I got my period. I was honestly a pretty late bloomer. I feel like all my friends had their period in elementary school in like grade six and seven. And I don't think I got mine until grade nine. And I saw a few questions of girls that are like, I haven't got my period yet. And like, I'm really embarrassed about that. Girl, if you have not had your period yet, that is a blessing. Embrace those days where you don't have to worry about it or think about it or prepare for it. You are lucky. Being a late bloomer, now that I look back at it, was honestly so bomb. And like maybe a part of that for me is that like, I wasn't waiting on big boobs that any female in my family has. So I was like, I don't care when I get my period because like, I'm not really getting anything else either. So yeah, I didn't start my period until I was in grade nine and honestly, every body is different. And if you don't have your period yet, do not stress because it's nothing to chase after. It's really, really not. And in terms of like cramps and stuff, I usually am a little bit crampy on the day of my period. But other than that, I've been really, really, really lucky. I feel like before I was on birth control, I definitely had more cramping and birth control helped kind of like settle that with my hormones. So I definitely have experienced like excruciating cramp pain, especially like in my lower stomach. Like I always say that like my uterus feels like it's dying. That's so dramatic and not actually what's happening, but that is definitely what it feels like. Period poops, also a thing. I also experience them. Don't really look forward to them. Someone asked me if I like period poops. I, I I would say I don't really feel a specific type of way about them. I just feel like it's part of the process, you know, and I, I accept them. Now she just kind of looks like a thumb. Mona the thumb. But I'm gonna add a little more detail. We'll speed this up a little bit and then jump into our next topic. Okay, so we've made a little bit of progress. I... <laughs> I don't know. What did I get myself into? I, I feel as if... She gonna look real janky. I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna keep trucking away at this, but I thought that we could answer the next set of questions. Ooh, okay, this is a question all about first. First kiss, first time, first date, and were they awkward? Um... Were they awkward? I'm like trying to think if like yes is a good enough universal answer, but I'm actually not entirely sure. I had my first kiss when I was 15 and very unromantically, it was at a party with someone that I had barely known. It was a friend of a friend and it like wasn't, I was it awkward? I don't even remember. I don't think it was. I had had like one wine cooler, woo, like a Vex or something. I don't know if that's just a Canadian drink, but it's like a really highly sugary vodka cooler. And I don't think it was like overly awkward. I remember being super excited and then honestly, never saw that dude again. I think it was honestly mutual though. It just like happened and I was like, okay, cool. First time, I'm gonna save that for just like all virginity related questions as a whole topic in itself. But my first date was actually to the movies. I don't know if that's like still like a common first date. I feel like Netflix and chill is like this generation's version of a first date. My first date was to the movie theater and it was like before I was 16. So it's like my parents dropped me off and his parents dropped him off. And that was definitely awkward. We worked together at a grocery store and it was like cute. I think he paid for my movie ticket and I paid for the snacks and it was like cute and I'm sure we had very awkward like 15 year old conversation. I might have been 16, I can't remember. But yes, my first date was like so awkward to the point where I would like never ever, I would actually pay money to not ever have to like relive that in the form of like a video or something if there was the option to go back and watch old memories. But it was like a cute, very stereotypical first date. But yes, definitely, definitely awkward. I always remember being like, 
what do you talk about? Like, what do I talk about? How do I make conversation flow? And I'm sure he was just as nervous. And then we actually ended up dating for just over a year, I think. And that was like my very first like real relationship. Next question, because I asked for the awkward questions and I asked and I received. And this honestly isn't even awkward for me, but it was reoccurring. So I'm gonna say it and hopefully I never have to say it again. I'm sure that will not be the case, but are you and Alex ever going to get back together? No, the answer is no. We broke up for a reason and I think we've both probably grown a lot as adults after breaking up. And I've talked about this so many times before, but before a relationship ends, I really give it my all. But when two people aren't on the same page and just have different values and different goals in life, I think things get really tricky. Not to say that it can't work out for others, but I just know personally that that's not an option for me in the future because I know what I want, I know what I need, and I know what I deserve. So the answer is no, that's it, it's final. And honestly, I'm sick of seeing the question and I'm sick of answering the question. Here's another good dating question. What's my worst date experience? When I was living in Toronto, I went on a date with someone that I had met on a dating app. And that's a whole other video if you ever want a video on like my experience with dating apps. That's something that Jeremy and I will definitely be diving into on the podcast which if you don't know, Jeremy and I are launching a podcast. Super excited. Go check out the vlog channel if you want to know more about the podcast and when it is launching. But my very worst date, oh my God, it was just like so, so awkward. I made the rookie mistake of going for a meal and it was breakfast. So I thought it was gonna be like super chill. That's like so lax and not like a major commitment. Like dinner I think is a little more formal, which is totally fine. Like that's so common. But like if you don't know someone and have no mutual friends and like don't really know what you're getting into I feel like coffee or drinks is a better first date obviously if you're of age but we went for a breakfast date and it was so 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 awkward I don't remember how old I was it was at some point when I was living in Toronto it ended up feeling kind of like an interview honestly more on my part the guy really just didn't have like much to say so I kept asking more questions to try and like provoke conversation which honestly just kept ending in a dead end and so I would panic and ask another question I ended up going to the bathroom at some point to be like oh my god like I have no more questions for this person we obviously just like can't make a conversation flow naturally it was so bad I ate so fast when I tell you that I inhaled my food to make this date go faster and so we obviously had to like wait until we were both done eating for this date to end I think that we both knew that that was not going to lead to a second date and I think uh, he texted me after being like that was fun and the conversation ended there and that was it we never saw each other again <laughs> <laughs> I feel like dating naturally is just like something where you're going to run into so many awkward experiences There are so many people in the world and everyone's so different that there's just some people that you were just not gonna vibe with And you are more than likely to run into Handfuls and handfuls of people that like are on different ratings of your vibe with scale That guy was very low on my vibe with scale very, very low. Oh my God, going in with the dark colors is really, 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 really scary. I really committed right here for it to be dark, but like this is really, really dark and I feel like that's my next spot to go in with. I just like to paint nose and eyes and lips. I'm so scared. But my next goal is to do the hair and then I'm gonna contour her face and do her neck and then we do features. currently and she looks like Mr. Potato Head so that's good. I keep making her face too wide. I don't know. I really don't know. There's like little tiny portions of it that I'm like oh actually that doesn't look that bad. Like if you take this like little tiny corner of a spot here I'm like yeah it's not bad. Or like this little spot like right no you know what I don't even like that spot. It is debilitating being a perfectionist that's not actually good at painting trying to paint. The circles that I am mentally and physically going through right now, unbearable. We'll see just like how far this goes. I'm gonna start just slap it on some features. I think we'll start with a nose since that's pretty center and just see what happens. That's the game plan right now. I have so much regret, it's not even funny. Anyways, let's move on to some questions while we work on this nose. Oh my god, okay, this is one of my favorite questions that I got. Which boob is your favorite? My favorite boob is hands down my left boob. Like, no joke, like, my left boob is, is the OG, the MVP. 
the left boob's a little bit bigger, that's why. Do you wear thongs? Okay, I literally just had the funniest conversation with Jeremy about thongs. He was like, I don't understand like why you would want that piece of fabric to sit on your butthole all day long. Like I sleep in a thong, I wear a thong all day. I barely even own like non-thong underwear to be honest, but like, <laughs> This conversation that we had. I'm gonna just recap it for you and explain it the way that I explained it to him. I feel like regular underwear moves so much around your butt and then you just end up having a wedgie and so you end up having so much freaking underwear in your butt crack. <laughs> what is this video? I'm literally losing it. You have so much underwear just like being wedgie that why not just wear a thong and not have underwear lines and not have like it's not even about underwear lines because like whatever like do you if you want underwear lines like it, it literally doesn't matter i just like i feel so uncomfortable always adjusting my underwear when there's a ton of fabric so i personally think that thongs are more comfortable because i feel like it, there's just like no adjusting there's only one place for it to sit it's on your butthole <laughs> please dad if you're watching just Edit the video, just exit the video. Oh my God, okay, here's a question. How bad are UTIs? UTI stands for urinary tract infection. <sighs> I know that men can get them as well, but I feel like UTIs in women are really, really common. I've had a few, but only one that was really, 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 really bad in my first year of college. And honestly, I was like, this is it. This is the end of me, I'm about to die. I'm, I'm literally about to die. It's like when you feel like you always need to pee, like it feels like your bladder is constantly full even though you have no pee, and then when you do go pee, A, you pee blood, so that's fun and very alarming in many, many ways. And then it's also just like the most excruciating, burning, like razor pain just shooting through your body. Please, please don't try and chug a gallon of cranberry juice. If you are peeing blood, go to the doctor. Please go to the doctor. Oh my gosh, you guys. I just like, I can't, I can't. I don't want to, and I can't. Let's see. Little Mona, where's your nose at? She's got a big old forehead. This is kind of like the bridge. Okay, so let's talk about SEX. <laughs> Okay, so the first question is, does the first time hurt? Again, this is so different for everyone. I mean, I feel like I've talked to so many friends and everyone's experience is so different. So again, there's no textbook answer for this question. And I feel like it's so frustrating that there's not like one answer for things you can do to like prepare and I don't know, just like help guide you or prepare you or anything. So that's why I feel like it's so important to be able to like have these conversations, but my first time, personally, was very, very painful. I was in a very healthy, loving relationship where I felt ready and prepared and super, super comfortable. But girl, that hurts. <laughs> and again, this is so different depending on so many different factors, so many different factors. And when it comes to like, what age you lose your virginity at, it is so, 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 so up to you. So up to you. So, 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 I cannot stress this enough. There is no right time. There is no specific age. There is no timeline that you have to hit. And I cannot stress that enough. Some people wait until marriage. Some people wait until they're in a comfortable relationship. Some people just want to do it when they feel like they're ready. It is so personal. Obviously, it's so important to be with someone that you trust and you're comfortable with. But outside of that, this is your decision. It's your body, your decision, your choice, your body, your body, your choice. And there is no argument there. I was 16 and I think my first experience it was as good as it could have been pain aside I was in an amazing relationship. I was ready comfortable prepared all the things that were on my personal checklist of when it would be time for me But again, I cannot stress this enough consensual safe and comfortable I think are like my personal three pillars I kind of grew up expecting and knowing that I would want for my first time, but again, it is completely completely, completely, completely different depending on who you are and there's no one that can tell you what's right or wrong for your body. I literally can't believe we're having a sex talk sitting next to this like Mr. Potato Head Mona Lisa. Like what a world. If I had thought that I'd be in this scenario right now a year ago, actually, you know what, I might be like, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, take a stab at some of these facial features and we'll see how this goes. I'm watching the finale of the show I've been watching on Netflix called The Society. It's okay. I don't know if I'd recommend it. It's been fine, but I do want to finish it. You guys, I can't. 
can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I really strive to do my best and I can't do this. I can't, I just, <laughs> I don't have the facilities to do this. <laughs> I tried so hard, I tried, I really did. We have an amazing background that I actually am so proud of and you know, her jawline is okay, it's okay. This is out of my league, this is out of my league and I'm so sorry for those of you who I might be disappointing right now but <laughs> I'm trying so hard and it's like, this is not in my realm of possibilities. And I am so sorry that I have let you down. <laughs> so on that note, let's answer some more juicy questions. Okay, here's actually a question that I saw a ton of other like related questions about, about shaving. Again, I know the theme of this video is very much like do you and whatever makes you feel best and whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. And honestly, if you have answers that you feel like are worth sharing in the comments that you think could help other people, I absolutely encourage you to share them in the comments. So this specific question is do girls really need to shave down there. No. The key word that I'm answering off of is need and do you need to shave down there? No. Can you if you want to? Yes. Are there a ton of different ways to get rid of hair if you don't want it? Yes. Just based on having this conversation with a ton of friends, I will share the knowledge that I know and that I have experienced. For those of you who may not be comfortable having this conversation and you can take whatever you want away from uh, this dialogue. So personally, um, being half Asian, I just don't really grow a lot of body hair. I really truly don't. As you can see from my very sparse, microbladed eyebrows and lack of eyelashes. I really just don't grow a ton of body hair. Like no joke, from the knee up, I don't even have to shave my leg there because hair doesn't really grow there. So personally, I just like don't sprout that much body hair. So shaving for me has been totally a-okay. I don't really struggle too much with like razor bumps or ingrown hairs. But a lot of my friends are super familiar with waxing, which they find is obviously the most painful, but it's quick and it's easy and hair hair stays gone for the longest amount of time versus shaving, which just takes off like the surface level hairs, whereas waxing like rips out the entire root. And then a lot of my friends love laser hair removal. The only problem with laser is that obviously it can be expensive and you have to go in for multiple sessions. So that's something that I've actually thought about doing just because I really don't have that much body hair. And it could potentially be a permanent hair removal solution for me with very few rounds since I don't have dark or coarse hair. And from what I understand, the darker and coarser your hair, the more sessions you'll have to go in for. I've had friends go in for over 12 sessions. I've had friends do all of it in three or four sessions. So it's totally dependent on your body and your type of body hair. But at the end of the day, if you want to keep your body hair, girl, that is on you. That is your body hair. Again, your body, your choice. If that's what makes you comfortable and makes you most confident, go for it. Absolutely go for it. That's just been my personal experience. Oh, and also Nair. I've used Nair like one time, didn't love it. I've also never tried sugaring. So if anyone has any information they wanna share about sugaring, leave that ish down below so that I too can learn. I think that's like a pretty solid coverage on like awkward girl questions, periods, sex, boobs, thongs, shaving. Am I missing anything? First dates, first kisses. At the end of the day, I want you guys to do whatever makes you feel the best, the most confident, the most comfortable. And there are so many resources online to learn more about so many different elements about growing up. If you feel like you don't have a trustworthy source to turn to, aside from maybe your doctor, I want you guys to be safe. I want you guys to be educated. I think it's so important to normalize this conversation, to realize that every single female goes through all of these struggles. You are not alone. And there's so much information available if you do have questions or concerns or curiosity. So anyways, um, I'm a little sad about Mona. She, where's her face? Where's her regular face? Girl! Girl! <laughs> I made her face way too big. Oh my god. Here, we'll finish her off. We'll finish strong. <laughs> oh my god. Oh god. I'm not proud of this. I'm really not. We can foul this away in like the semi-failed craft videos because it's not my best work. It's really not. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this where we're like crafting but also having girl talk because this was super fun for me and gave me something to do and just gave me like more stuff to chat with you guys about, which I love. Make sure to subscribe to the vlog channel if you have not already. I feel like the combos on the vlog channel 
flow more in the direction of like this conversation than about crafts, obviously, because it's just my day-to-day -day life. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys over on the vlog channel and again next Sunday for another Sunday. Ah, wah. Okay, bye guys, love you. My pretty little kingdom out here running the street.